Sujitra, ma'am, are you here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So it is my pleasant privilege to introduce Dr. Seema Sharma, MD, FICOG, FRCOG, Director, Srishti Femcare. She has authored four books for MRCOG, co-founder of Pratisandhi Foundation. She is going to talk about adolescent sexual education in Indian perspectives. This is a very relevant topic as the previous speaker, Dr. Tripti said, in India, sex education for teenagers is still something of a taboo. Indian traditions make it somewhat a hush-hush affair. And even when we take classes for adolescents, the teachers, the parents are a, are a little bit uncomfortable when we come to the contraception and about the pregnancy part of it. But what I notice is that when we talk about those subjects, there is pin drop silence. The reason being the teenagers are curious and nobody is telling them what is what and they want to know. And so if we as doctors do not tell them, they will turn to the media and other friends who will misinform them. And that is what is leading to so much of suppressed sexual problems erupting as horrendous sexual crimes. So we are so happy to have Dr. Seema Sharma, the expert. Madam, we are looking forward to your talk. Please take over. Thank you so much, Suchitra ma'am. Um, can you all see my screen? Can you see my screen? Not no. no. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now it's coming. Now it is there. OK. Well, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Dr. Tripti has made my life very easy by tackling a lot of things already. So uh, sexuality education, uh, I want to, it's, it's a subject very close to my heart because I also run an NGO and I'll, I'm happy to share that we are the top five NGOs in India uh, concerned with spreading of sexuality education. And we essentially work amongst the downtrodden. Uh, so what is sexuality education? We see a lot of negativity about sexuality education. People, when you talk about sex ed, there is the first answer is no, we are Indians, we don't talk about sex. Everybody is very wary of sexuality education. So let us understand exactly what do we mean by sexuality education? So WHO says comprehensive sexuality education should be a curriculum based process. It is not that you go to a school one day, start talking about menstruation, start talking about how to use pads and that becomes sexuality education. But the actuality education has to be a curriculum based continuous process of teaching. It should take care of the cognitive emotional, physical, and social aspects of sexuality. The idea is we should empower essentially the younger generation and even the adults so that they realize about their health, their well-being, their dignity, develop respect for each other, consider that how their personal choices affect the well-being of their partners and understand and ensure the protection of their rights throughout their lives. It is not meant to be imparted as a random process. It cannot be communicated through standalone workshops. It is not just about puberty and menstruation. And it is not only for young adults. We all need good sexuality education throughout our lives. It is different for a dollar sense. It's different for a five-year-old. It is different for a 15-year-old. It is different for 25-year-old and so on. And we definitely do not want to create fear about sexuality. So we understand that though we interchange sexuality education with sex ed, that is a short form of sexuality education, sexuality is not equivalent to sex because sex is essentially the physical aspect. It could be intercourse, it could be oral sex, it could be other methods of masturbation, it could be uh, sexual kissing. Everything is under the umbrella of sex and sex is not only penovaginal intercourse. So if we understand the differences between these words, we would not be close to sex education because when we talk about sex education, a lot of 
you know, adults would, when we approach schools for uh, a talk or, you know, to introduce the sexual education, principals often tell us that, uh, are you going to only talk about the intercourse part of it? My children already know it from, from the internet. So you don't have to talk about it. And we don't want to feel embarrassed in front of the students. So essentially, we have to tell them that, well, no, sexuality education goes much beyond. So the important features as described by the WHO is that sexual compre comprehensive sexuality education has to be scientifically accurate. We need to start at a young age and every country has to choose their own age. Like in UK, you know, they believe that you should talk to a child at the age of 10 about the sexual intercourse part of it because after that, the child can be initiated into it anytime. So we have to develop our own. Uh, it has to be comprehensive. Like Dr. Tripti said that we need to talk about all aspects, the, the sexual, the reproductive, the physical, mental, emotional parts of sex and the human rights that the woman also has an equal right when she says no, she means no, that having sex with somebody less than 18 is a crime and also the ability to develop life skills to develop, to support healthy choices is very important. So the key concepts in a CSE include the relationships. The child has to be taught about the importance of families. What is family all about? How does family come into picture? What are the values about sexuality? And it is not only about penis dominance. Uh, it is also about vulval equality. Mm -hmm. uh, the gender biases, uh, the violence, uh, uh, how their sexual aggression can uh, be taken as a violence and then women also have a right to bodily integrity and privacy and consent so all these have to be taught to young adults then the skills for health the human biology the sexuality and reproductive health all are important components of comprehensive sexuality education myths everybody is mm -hmm. totally close to sex education even doctors you know, when, when I started this NGO and I started putting in my classmates group, which is Lady Harding group, there was a lot of reluctance, which I was surprised that even doctors were not happy. Even gynecologists were like, why sex ed? And, you know, everybody believes if you are telling children about how to have intercourse, they are going to indulge into it. But well, I think everybody is very wrong about it. People believe that CSC leads to early sexual initiation. It deprives children of their innocence. We want to believe our children are innocent, uh, are innocent because we don't know what's going on in their lives. Uh, it goes against our culture, our religion. We are Indians. We don't indulge in intercourses before marriages. We are supposed to be one man, one woman person. Uh, teachers uh, are extremely uncomfortable themselves to talk about even basic biology. If you you know, you see a class of biology, the genitals are covered and the teacher is just talking about it. And they, the common plea is it's already covered in biology books. Why do we have to take special classes for that? Well, my NGO is called Prati Sandhi and we did a survey uh, in Delhi University, 50, 50 colleges. We did a random survey one day and we uh, did uh, 18 years onwards, still the age of 21 years, 54% of students were sexually active. This is our survey in Delhi, top colleges. 82% students got their knowledge through online channels. And the average age of sexual initiation was 16 years for women and 17 and a half years for boys. 71% had engaged in penetrative sexual intercourse. And we are talking about POXO. I mean, 71% children were already sexually active here and they admitted to it. 30% believe, but they had very poor knowledge. They were not sure about what constitutes an STI. Can you, I mean, 30% believe that you could not get an STI from oral sex and 96% believe sexuality education was needed. And they believe they were ill-equipped with sexuality education. So now research also shows that Comprehensive sexuality education leads to delayed initiation, decreased frequency, and decreased number of sexual partners and sexual intercourses. It reduces risk taking, increases the use of condoms and contraception, and improves attitudes related to sexual and reproductive health. Now, we all agree as at least doctors that sexuality education is very important, and we should encourage sexuality education in whatever form is possible. Coming to the Indian scenario, 
after 400 years of Muslim invasion and 200 years of British rule under the Victorian era, we as Indians have become extremely sexually conservative. From the land of Kama Sutra, where all our temples were adorned with explicit god and goddesses, with explicit uh, positions, uh, we have forgotten all about that and we have stuck to uh, the negative part of uh, being, being sexual. The talk in the Indian scenario about women's liberation essentially started in 1970s and the 80s, uh, the HIV epidemic, we made it more and more legitimate to talk about women's rights. But we still give too much emphasis on HIV, AIDS, menstruation. And, you know, we totally ignore uh, topics like anatomy, safe sex practices, contraception. These are very important at an individual level, and we are totally ignoring that. Most schools, both private and public, do not have any form of structured sexuality education in their curriculum. And Government of India, in collaboration with UNICEF and NACO, introduced a program which was not only not in, uh, implemented by the different states, but it was blanketly banned by 12 governments and the content was considered inappropriate. So clearly we need a change in our outlook. There was this survey wherein, though I believe the numbers might be much higher, there was this survey by the UNICEF and the Prayas uh, Foundation, which is a leading NGO in this field, they did a survey of 15,000 random children across 13 states and they found 53% of Indian children between 5 and 12 years have been sexually abused. Sad part, oh. most of them have been abused by parents, close contacts, relatives, servants, and more than 50% of these go unreported. So clearly as doctors, if you start believing in the POXO ad, you have a huge, huge work at your hand because you will be almost talking about every second child here. Every second child in some form has been abused. This is shocking. And we all believe that no, not my child, not my child. My child doesn't indulge in sexual activity. My child has never been abused. I'm protective, but we all understand that these things are going on. So this is the latest book that we have released. It's available on Amazon and Kindle as well. It talks about sex education, covers all aspects of gender identity, our orientation, the consent issues, the laws, contraception, and it is essentially meant for use by late adolescents between 16 to 20 years of age. So together we can create awareness about normality of sexuality. As doctors, not all of us have the time and the liberty to talk about sexuality education. But at least we can make sure, we can listen to our patients, we can listen to our adolescents, we can make sure that all the adolescents who are in our periphery, none of the girls would wake up one day morning horrified to see blood on their undergarments, to see, oh my God, I'm going to die. And then suddenly she finds out mm -hmm. this is probably going to be normal for the next 40 years of her life. Mm -hmm. We don't want boys uh, you know, living in panic and fear that they have urinated in bed when they just have normal nocturnal emissions. So listen to the adolescents, have a non-judgmental attitude, and together we can change a little bit attitude about sexuality and help everybody in the pantry. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful uh, speech, Dr. Seema. I think your Prithi Sandhi is doing excellent work. And I'm sure we will also take up the baton from you in our state. So that was really great. You have inspired us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Prithi, uh, there is one question for you in the chat box here. Uh, yes. It is about prescribing uh, OCPs to an adolescent. What is the legal position about it? So Are most legally safe to prescribe an uh, OCP to an unmarried girl who is an adolescent? That is the question. The OCPs we have been prescribed since ages to adolescent girls, if not for contraception, for many other uses. So, uh, as I said that, uh, you know, as law abiding people, we have to understand the law of the land. But we are intelligent people. We can, you know, wriggle our way through. So if you think that the girl is sexually active, of course, you can write for irregular periods, you can write for acne, you can write for dysmenorrhea. There are so many ways and these are over the counter drugs, you can always tell her also. So there are ways that we can help them out. 
yes having sex before the age of 18 is a punishable offense under poxo but then somewhere along the line we are doctors we have not only a legal responsibility we have a social responsibility also so we need to help them because after all it is a abortion unsafe abortions that is a very huge concern for these girls and we don't want them to get pregnant above all so we have to keep our eyes open and we have to help them out medically as much as possible and uh, dr tipti whatever the emergency contraception can you prescribe emergency contraception pardon can you prescribe emergency contraception to adolescent it is a over the counter drug you don't need to prescribe emergency pills i don't think you should write emergency contraceptive pill because you know if there is a sexual activity and you it's a crime under 18 if you are aware of it you should report to the police right. it's as uh, as good as the law the law says that so as i said we are intelligent people we need to find our way through it is all over the television please do not write on the prescription i would not say that the emergency contraceptive because they have only one utility they have no other use you can never find your way out supposing later on this girl is uh, you know embroiled in the rape case so then what will you do uh and in emergency contraception even we see some young married couple using emergency contraception as a method of their contraception every yeah. time they have sex they so it is going to be more prevalent among adolescents if they think that this can be used on a regular basis every time they yes, have i had a doctor friend madam whose wife used to use it two three times a month <laughs> so you know <laughs> and as the doctor tripti rightly said we see them when the damage is already done as yeah. a as a case of septic abortion or a case of teenage pregnancy who suddenly comes with seven months of amnesia because she doesn't know she is pregnant she doesn't yes. know who to tell and even the parents doesn't know the belly was becoming large and all the emotional pain and the stress and the trauma last longer than the physical ones so it is very really important as dr sim also told how to how to educate these girls what i would like to say is that we can't be sitting on a podium just not literally and tell them what to do we have to be with them at the same level whoever is giving the education has to do that so it is very important to train the trainers whoever it may be maybe the parents maybe the school teachers it is important to train them and maybe foxy can take an initiative to do that so that the appropriate training is finally reaching these adults very right and i somewhere feel that you know sometimes as doctors we do not have to write what is culturally right we have to write what is medically right so uh, that and we do not have to be judgmental to these girls because they run away they won't come to you if you start tell preaching them there was this article in the times of india that i do not go to this doctor because this doctor is preachy <laughs> if you start telling them that this it is not good for your age so i don't think that should be left for some other time this is the you know the clinic where you should tell them about stis and about pregnancy and contraception we must do that and as you said madam we have to have our antenna up because yes. many a time these people neither the parents nor the children tell the, tell us about the sexual abuse but they suddenly become very depressed their grades go down yes. and uh, the look on their face we have to be aware of that yes so i think uh, shall we are there any more questions uh, dr kunimaji i can't see any more in the chat no, that's all that's all yeah. so yeah with that we we'll to add anything or we move on to the next session yeah with that we'll wind up this session uh, thank you so much uh, dr tripti and dr seema for that wonderful talks uh it was well timed and well presented the pace was perfect and mm -hmm. uh, thank you the chairpersons uh, dr Ch sujitra ma'am and dr mumtaz uh, for sparing time we'll move on to the next session and just uh, sharing the uh, cv of the next uh, session chairpersons